Hi, welcome to the Pursuit of Truth. So, <laughs> the Conservative government, led by Boris Johnson currently, has decided that COVID-19 is finishing in March. I don't know if the WHO didn't get the memo for that or the rest of the world didn't get the memo for that. So we're going to have to live with it now. Um, like a, 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 a flu, I think Sajid Javid said. <laughs> it's funny, before when people said, yeah, well, if you look at the numbers, it's just like a, a flu. Uh, it's not much more than that. It's more like a serious flu. Oh, you're an anti-vaxxer. <laughs> Whereas now, because it suits their story, it's, oh, it's like a serious flu. You get over it. Go back to fucking work and make money for us all so we can sit down and argue with each other. <laughs> and people don't see it. I mean, the interviewer asked her and he sort of came up with some excuse like, wow, if this was at the beginning when we didn't have the vaccination, then that would have been a different argument. No, it wouldn't because the, the, the disease is the same no matter what the situation you're within. You're, either you're saying it is like a flu or it isn't like a flu, even if you didn't have a vaccine for it or not. That doesn't make any difference. His argument doesn't actually logically work. But I get what he's trying to do. And then most people will just, well, yeah, OK, that's fine then. Those anti-vaxxers at the beginning saying that it was just like a flu. <laughs> because the numbers that they keep, I'm, I'm sure because they were showing, they, they, put, they, didn't, they don't concentrate too much on deaths. They concentrate on the, the uh, amount of cases. And of course, the thing that I don't know why they've forgotten it, and I don't know why the journalists have forgotten it, because they reported on it at the beginning, I think it was the 5th of January, when the government changed the PCR lateral flow test rules in lots of different areas and um, one of them was um, that if you had a lateral flow test previously um, because you can do it yourself and it's up to you to report it and I'm sure a lot of people don't report it if they don't want to stay at home so that is un unreliable so with the PCR test it wasn't up to you to report it it was you sent the test away and they would verify it and they would have the results of course that gives you a better number because someone else who's not had doesn't have a vested interest in it is, is recording the results but of course what they did is they changed that and said uh, from the 5th of january that if you had a lateral flow test and it was positive therefore you didn't need to take a pcr test anymore it was then you that you can take that as you have covid so of course that will change the statistics that will change the numbers because you've changed something and how can you then not, how can you be saying, oh, the numbers are coming, the cases are coming down, we've, we've, we, we've reached the peak. Yes, the cases are coming down because two weeks ago plus you changed the rules so that now you're not doing as many PCR tests as previously because you told people to accept the, LC, uh, the lateral flow tests. And are you taking those figures when people report them? Because that's through a different portal. You have to do it through the, through the, the, the government's portal as opposed to whoever was doing the PCR test was probably in a laboratory. So I don't know, are they taking the data from that at all? And also the fact is because it's that flow test and you get to do it yourself, it's then up to you whether you're going to be a good citizen or not and actually report the truth. Because it may be a problem that you can't go to work and therefore you're not going to report it. So <laughs> to sort of try and make out, I mean, I know, I know this is all like, a smoke screen because of Boris Johnson's uh, the letters that are going in to ask for his confidence vote and he knows that the Conservatives Conservatives are all about economy it's all about making money these people have got so much hands in, in different businesses and of course having these restrictions is restricting the amount of money that they can put in their pots under their beds and count their money like Scrooge McDuck <laughs> um, so therefore, he's trying to sweeten the pot for them by saying, we're going to get rid of the restrictions in March, even though there's still, you know, even though it's still a pandemic and it hasn't changed from that level and the WHO hasn't changed that level, even though more people are now dying than before. Now it's 300, 400 that are dying every day. And that's not just because of the weekend, because we're past the weekend. You know, before it was 100 and that was acceptable. Now it's acceptable for three to 400 people to die every single day. And you can go and risk it by going to work or going wherever you want to do. And I know there'll be people who are talking about freedoms and watch it, you know, saying, well, it's good that, you know, that's that now we can be free again. We're well, not free anyway. You've never been free because you have a passport. You have a system that you have to work within that stops you from being truly free. You're only as free as, 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 as much as the system allows you to be free. Can't go wherever you want, even though this planet is not owned by anyone, because who can possess something when you're going to die? 
can't possess something when you're going to die, that you're not going to be here forever. And possession is such a caveman instinct of, oh, this is mine. What? This land is yours. How is it yours? This, this uh, natural resource, this water, this energy is yours. You never made it. You didn't create it. It was here in, before you were even around. If it's God or if it's uh, random, I, 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 I struggle to, with the random because when you see, like, um, I was watching uh, a David Attenborough thing. Uh, what was it called? about plants the green planet and uh, the venus flytrap how it opens and it will you have to it counts 20 seconds between uh, having assuming this is factually true uh, but it did demonstrate it you know you, it's, you stroke one of the the pines the inside that uh, detects if a flies in there and it will wait till a few times before it actually closes so it's counting it's waiting it's got a kind of memory it's like it's alive and, you know, these kinds of things, not just that, there's lots of things with nature where it relies on these kinds of things. The, 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 the chances of all those things happening, not only our existence and us being conscious and being able to think and do all these things, the, the, all the animals, you know, the way that pollen is moved and the way that, um, it was also on that program where they, you know, the, the, they trap insects through that. They know that insects are going to come. So... Uh, I know that could be explained through Darwinism or whatever, but it just seems so fantastical that there's so many complex things, and even like the 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 the, the uh, if the planets are where they are and how they are and the space in between and all that stuff that makes them stay where they are and us be alive because of where the sun is and etc. All that kind of cosmic information and and natural information for that for it to not been got our god now i don't know whether it's christian or muslim god or, or whatever jewish god or hindu or sikh and uh, no i don't you know that may be there may be a god who did all this and he may be long gone or he may have taught some of these things and we've bastardized them through you know writing them down and trying to control people because we love to control people and we love stories so whether it's a living god or whether it's the same god that's in the bible of the Quran, but that that's a totally different story I don't know that, but I, I can't believe that it was just by chance. It seems too much. But anyway, to end of this, just so that you don't realise that it's not just my um, me saying about the the changes in the government's putting. Here's a bit from Sky News when they were talking about it. Certain venues. However, uh, Sajid Javid making clear that whilst in his view today was a major milestone, it's not quite the end of the road yet. Uh, let's bring in our science correspondent, uh, Thomas Moore, who was listening with interest to that which we heard uh, from Mr. Javid and Dr. Hopkins. Good to see you this evening, uh, Thomas. Um, we heard from Sir Keir Starmer at Prime Minister's Questions today asking the Prime Minister for the evidence base for the move from Plan B back to Plan A. D did we get it? Well, is there evidence that we are past the peak of Omicron? Yes, I think there is. From the Office for National Statistics today, we've seen that last week there was a 20% drop uh, in infections compared to the week before. If you look at the hospital stats, uh, they are beginning to decline in every region apart from the Midlands where they are plateauing. So I think things are getting a lot better. But is there evidence to support lifting Plan B at this stage? No, we haven't had that evidence yet. Uh, there are warnings um, that the, the government SAGE scientists have looked at uh, from University of Warwick. They've done modelling which suggests that if you lift Plan B now, that in the following four weeks, if, if behaviour returns to, to normal, that you will get a spring wave uh, of hospital admissions of between 1,000 and 2,000 a day, a rebound of the virus as it seizes that opportunity to spread. That is the big concern, that you're going to see these very high case rates at the moment uh, beginning to, to plateau, not to decline as fast as they have been in, in recent, uh, recent days. Uh, and, and you have to bear in mind, we're still seeing 100,000 cases a day peak of last January was 61,000, and we thought that was a really high number. We're not even down to that level yet. So this is full of peril. Uh, this could rebound at any stage. While there is so much virus around, and while it is, is, uh, is able to spread uh, through large proportion of, of the population, and that is going to be the risk. The government has rolled the dice today. It is a gamble. 
uh, but it is hoping that he's going to uh, that it, he's going to go be able to get away with it. There is enough immunity there uh, to, to slow this virus enough. Thomas, many thanks indeed. So there you go. That's just in case you didn't believe me that I was just saying it. There you heard it from Sky News as well. Not that that makes any difference because we're both equal. Um, but here's the rules, just in case you don't believe it, I'll put the link, it was 5th of January. The rules on COVID testing around the UK are changing to help reduce the number of people needlessly isolating and ease the pressure on supplies. Uh, no follow-up for PCR test required if you don't have symptoms. Previously, anyone who tests positive for COVID on a natural flow test was asked to book a confirmatory, confirmatory can't say it, PCR test, either using a home kit or a testing site. Their isolation period will start from the day of symptoms, blah, 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 blah. Um... There's a big graph. Uh, people who have symptoms still do do a PCR test, but they can begin their isolation period. Blah blah blah. What's this? This means that isolation period can start, meaning they can be out of isolation over six days. Oh, this is a squash, I think. Um, as Omicron begins to spread rapidly in December, the government reintroduced pre de de departure COVID tests for people travelling to England. This involved an L F T or PCR test up to two days. Uh, so I think they changed that as well. Daily test for frontline workers. So yeah, they changed the the rules. I'll put the link in. You can read it yourself. Well, it was on the news anyway. Everyone knows that now. You don't have if you get a lateral flow test, you don't have to do a PCR test. I don't know. There it was a bit confusing that if you do have symptoms, then you do have to still do it. So that may mean that if you it, it, the people who are undetectable, and of course, um, yeah, that that's the other point as well and that. The, the, this is only getting people that are bothered to do the tests and also the people that may think they need to do the test because a lot of people may have the disease, the, the infection, may have COVID-19, not know they have it because they have no symptoms and then there's no reason because they're not going to work and they're not a healthcare worker so they don't have to do these lateral flow tests. So therefore that would also mean that the numbers are never going to be that accurate in the first place. But yeah, it, does, it just seems like they're willing to risk our lives. And we're meant to show, you know, we're meant, the system that we all signed up to through our birth certificate of living the way that we do in, in keeping the economy running and keeping ourselves bound to the, to the slavery of money. We have to then respect these governments, these people that we put in. Although I was watching a really good program about JFK. Uh, let's see if I can remember the title first. JFK, Destiny Denied. I'm sure, I was, uh, no, Destiny Betrayed, that's it, Destiny Betrayed, Oliver Stone, really, really good, I can't go into it because there's so many bits, but I would, if you're interested in JFK or interested in, in how governments work, it's very interesting because it shows you that it didn't look like JFK was actually really in power, it was the military and there was lots of stuff going on there and there's lots of question marks, I mean, too many for me to mention about Oswald, about other uh, people that were involved and who was really involved and what it was really about. I mean, it certainly makes you see that government isn't as clear-cut as, as it seems and there's a lot of room for conspiracy, there's a lot of room for machinations and, and all sorts of things and evil doing, I suppose you, uh, George W. Bush would call it. <laughs> anyway, that's enough waffling from me. Take care, take it easy, God bless and peace. <laughs>